December the 2nd, 1993, the Honorable Master. Our three souls and seven spirits are like children, but they each have only one sense faculty, not many. Because they control our bodies, they are, we are able to speak and perform actions. They are gathered together, and when your cultivation is accomplished, they become what is known as a Buddha in Buddhism, or an immortal in Taoism. Some have only eyes and some have only ears, so they have each other. The child who has ears and can hear will have the one who can see. They are interconnected, so when you achieve the interchangeable functioning of the six sense faculties, your ears will be able to eat and talk. There are many states such as these that you cannot even conceive of. Disciple Venerable Master, you mentioned that you had a young disciple who went to the heavens to play and was captured by a demon king. He cried, What can I do? I can't come back. Did some of his souls and spirits go there? Venerable Master, among his three souls and seven spirits, Maybe only one went, or maybe two went, or maybe three or four went. It's not for sure. Once they got there, they aggregated together. They were not seven or three separate entities. Once they go out, they unite into one. That's how wonderful and mysterious it is. It's a mass of efficacious energy. Disciple is it because of different levels of cultivation that some people can send out more spirits than others? Venerable Master, it's better not to send spirits out. If they always go out to play, they risk being caught by the demons. When the souls and spirits are captured, one becomes dumb, retarded people and people who are that way because their souls and spirits have been seized by demons. Souls are ghosts, but with some cultivation, they can become spirits which are young in nature. With the more cultivation, they can become immortals. Cultivated to the ultimate, they become Buddhas. All these days of cultivation are achieved by the same individual soul. Disciple, if a person is in a vegetable, a vegetable or comatose state, or has lost some of his three souls and spirits and seven spirits although his physical body is still intact will the spirits and souls which have left him become another person vulnerable master they don't become another person they simply go with the demons that's why the person is sometimes lucid but sometimes very muddled disciple what if a cultivator who has sent out some of his three souls and seven spirits encounters Buddhas or Bodhisattvas? Venerable Master, if a person is truly cultivating, there will be Dharma protectors invisibly surrounding him. I have met a lot of strange people who can send spirits out of their bodies. Since you haven't encountered such states, you wouldn't recognize or understand them. For instance, the experience of those who act as mediums in Taiwan is described in the 50th Skanda Demon States. Disciple, have they reached that level in their cultivation? Venerable Master, they are advancing in their cultivation and create merit. Like all people, some learn to be good and others learn to be bad. Those who learn to be bad join the retinue of the Demon Kings. These ten souls together with the intellect, will, essence, and spirit will be able to interact with another, with one another without affecting his body. They will take turns as hosts and guests. They trade off roles and assist each other. They take turns playing the roles of the host and the guests. Then he may suddenly hear the drama being spoken in space. Someone is lecturing on the sutras in space. Who is it? He can hear the voice, but he can't see the person. In fact, it is just his own spiritual and physical selves. His intellect will 
essence and spirit take turns as host and guest to lecture or perhaps he will hear esoteric truths about uh, truths being pronounced simultaneously throughout the ten directions. Maybe you hear the sutras and the dharma being spoken in space. Why? Because the intra cultivation in previous lives, you heard the sutras and the dharma being spoken, and your spiritual and physical souls, intellect, will, essence, and spirit have not forgotten that. Thus, in this life, when the pressure in your cultivation reaches a peak, these past experiences come forth. This state is called the essence and souls alternately separating and uniting and the planting of good seeds. They cooperate with one another, coming together as one party or forming groups. They may speak the Dharma to enable you to understand what you didn't understand before so that you can plant the seeds for future good rules. It is a temporary, not a permanent state, and does not indicate sagehood. Don't get the idea that this state is extraordinary and say, look at me, I don't need to go to the lecture, the sutra lectures, I can hear the Dharma being spoken in space at any time I want. You may hear Dharma being spoken but that doesn't mean you have realized sagehood. If he does not think he has become a sage, if you don't become arrogant and think of yourself extraordinary, if you don't try to deceive others, then this will be a good state. Suppose you say, Wow, I can hear the drama even when no one is lecturing the sutras. Has that ever happened to you? No. Well, that has happened to me. But if you advertise your state to get people to believe in you, what will happen? If he considers himself a sage, then he will be vulnerable to the German's influence. As soon as you become self-satisfied and attached, thinking you're really great, the demons will possess you and make you fall. Sutra. Further, when the person's mind becomes clear, unveiled, bright, and penetrating. An internal light will shine forth and turn everything in the ten directions into the color of Jambu River Gold. All the various species of beings will be transformed into Tathagatas. Suddenly he will see Varoshana Buddha seated upon a platform of celestial light surrounded by a thousand Buddhas who simultaneously appear upon lotus blossoms in a hundred million lands. This state is called the mind and soul being instilled with spiritual awareness. When he has investigated to the point of clarity, the light of his mind will shine upon all worlds. This is a temporary state and does not indicate sagehood. If he does not think he has become a sage, then this will be a good state. But if he considers himself a sage, then he will be vulnerable to the demon's influence. Commentary. Further, when the person's mind becomes clear and pure, unveiled and manifest, bright and penetrating, an internal light will shine forth and send everything in the ten directions into the color of Jambu River gold. A bright light will emanate from within and then the walls of the ten directions will all take on the hue of Jabu River gold. All the various species of beings, beings born from worms, from eggs, from moisture, or by transformation, or any other kinds of beings, will be transformed into Tathagatas. Suddenly at this point, he will see Varuchana Buddha. Varuchana means pervading everywhere and is the name of the Buddha. He is not located anywhere and yet there is no place where he is not present. His body is everywhere. This person suddenly sees Varuchana, all the all pervasive Buddha seated on a platform of celestial light, manifesting his 10,000 foot tall body. Varuchana Buddha will be surrounded by a thousand Buddhas 
who simultaneously appear seated upon blue, yellow, red, and white lotus blossoms in a hundred million lamb, million lamps. This state is called the mind and soul being instilled with spiritual awareness. You should not think that this is real. Your mind and your physical soul are being influenced by a state of spiritual response and awakening. However, it is not real. When he has investigated to the point of clarity, the light of his mind will shine upon all worlds. When your mind comes to the point of understanding, it will illuminate all worlds. This is a temporary state and does not indicate sagehood. What is happening will not last a long time. You have not become a sage. If he does not think he has become a sage, then this will be a good state. But if he considers himself a sage, then he will be vulnerable to the demons of influence. If you say, incredible, I've seen Varochana Buddha. Have you seen him? Your skill is not as profound as mine. I've made it. Once you have such a thought, the demon kings will come and drag you off to the house. Sutra. Further, as the person uses his mind to intently investigate that wondrous light, he will contemplate without pause, restraining and subduing his mind so that it does not go to extremes. Suddenly, the space in the ten directions may take on the colors of the seven vicious things or the colors of a hundred vicious things, which simultaneously pervade everywhere without hindering hindering one another. The blues, yellows, reds, and whites will each be clearly apparent. This state is called excessively subduing the mind. It is a temporary state and does not indicate sagehood. If he does not think he has become a sage, then this will be a good state. But if he considers himself a sage, then he will be vulnerable to the demon's influence. Commentary Further, as the person uses his mind to intently investigate that wondrous light, he will contemplate without pause, restraining and subduing his mind so that it does not go to extremes. He tries to curb his mind so that it does not become overzealous. Suddenly, the space in the ten directions may take on the colors of the seven vicious things or the colors of a hundred vicious things which will simultaneously pervade everywhere throughout space without hindering one another. They will be mutually unobstructing. The blues, yellows, reds, and whites, the various colors, will each be clearly apparent. Each will display its own color. This state is called excessively subduing the mind. You are cultivating to restrain your mind, not letting it engage in false thinking, not allow it to have random thoughts. After the restraint occurs for a long time, it becomes excessive. You go beyond the proper measure, it is a temporary state and does not indicate sagehood. You will only temporarily be able to see the colors of the seven precious things in space. So this state does not mean you have attained sagehood. If he does not think he has become a sage, then this will be a good state. It will be all right. It will not be a bad state. But if he considers himself a sage, then he will be vulnerable to the demon's influence. You will be surrounded by demon influences and you will fall. Sutra Further, as the person uses his mind to investigate with clear discernment until the pure light no longer disperses, he will suddenly be able to see various things appear in a dark room at night just as if it were daytime why the objects that were already in the room do not disappear. This state is called refining the mind and purifying the vision until one is able to see in the dark. It is a temporary state and does not indicate sagehood. If he does not think he has become a sage, then this will be a good state. But if he considers himself a sage, 
then he will be vulnerable to the demon's influence. Commentary Further, as a person uses his mind to investigate with clear discernment until the pure light no longer disperses, again, this person uses his mind in samadhi to observe states until the pure light of his discerning mind becomes very focused and he is endowed with samadhi power. He will suddenly be able to see various things appear in a dark room in a house which is not lighted at night, just as if it were daytime, while the objects that were already in the room do not appear. Not only will he be able to see things that are inside the house, he will also be able to see things that are outside the house. Not only will he see what is already in the house, he will also see with great clarity the things that come into the house from outside. This state is called refining the mind and purifying the vision until one is able to see in the dark. Your mind is refined to the utmost extent and your vision is purified to the extreme point. With such pure vision, you will be able to see even in dark places. But it is a temporary state and does not indicate sagehood. You shouldn't think that this is the fruition of sagehood because it certainly isn't. If he does not think he has become a sage, then this will be a good state. But if he considers himself a sage, then he will be vulnerable to the demon's influence. If you become conceited and think that you have achieved great skill in cultivation, you will attract demonic obstructions. When some cultivators reach the state of ultimate purity and all-pervading light, they will suddenly see all kinds of things that is because they have opened they have opened the Buddha eye. However, not every person is able to open his Buddha eye. And even if one does, it may not stay open forever. In the state described here, the Buddha eye opens temporarily, enabling one to see the objects in a dark house as if there were light. I also mentioned that you would be able to see things coming to the house from outside. What sort of things might this be? For example, you might see a spirit, a ghost, a bodhisattva, or a Buddha coming into the dark house from outside. It's not for certain that you will experience these states. Not everyone experiences such states, but some people might. These are states that may occur at some point in your cultivation, but don't think that all cultivators go through the same experiences because that's not the case. Some people open the Buddha eye permanently that is known as a spiritual power that comes as a reward. Such people industriously cultivated the drama of the thousand hands and a thousand eyes in previous lives and as a result, they can open the Buddha eye in life after life. Other people may only be, or be able to open the Buddha eye temporarily because their minds are not in a perpetual state of purity. If their minds were constantly pure and they had cultivated the drama of great compassion in their previous lives, they would be able to open the Buddha eye permanently. There are a variety of differing circumstances in cultivation. Sutra, further, when his mind completely merges with the emptiness, his four limbs will suddenly become like grass or wood. Devoid of sensation, even when burned by fire or cut with a knife, the burning of fire will not make his limbs hot, and even when his flesh is cut, it will be like wood being whittled. This state is called the merging of external states and the blending of the four elements into a uniform substance. It is a temporary state and does not indicate sagehood. If he does not think he has become a sage, then this will be a good state. But if he considers himself a sage, then he will be vulnerable to the demon's influence. 
commentary further, when his mind completely merges with the emptiness, you may say that the mind exists, yet it doesn't. You may say it doesn't exist, yet it does. His volumes will suddenly become like grass or wood, devoid of sensation, even when burned by fire or cut with a knife. If you cut his arms or legs with a knife or burn them with fire, with fire, he will not feel any pain or discomfort. The burning of fire will not make his limbs hot. When you try to burn them, they won't even become hot. And even when his flesh is cut, it will be like wood being whittled. If you slice off the flesh from his arms and legs, it will be just like shaving wood. He will feel no pain or irritation. This state is called the merging of external states and the blending of the four elements into a uniform substance. Defined external states will come together and the nature of earth, water, fire and air will become a single substance. However, it is a temporary state, an occasional experience and does not indicate sagehood. Do not think you have realized sagehood. If he does not think he has become a sage, then this will be a good state. But if he considers himself a sage and becomes self-satisfied and haughty, then he will be vulnerable to the demon's influence. You will be attacked and surrounded by us of demon beings. Sutra further, when his mind accomplishes such Purity that his skill in purifying the mind has reached its ultimate. He will suddenly see the earth, the mountains, and the rivers in the ten directions turn into Buddha lands, replete with the seven precious things. Their light shining everywhere. He will also see Buddhas, Sadakatas, as many as the sands of the Ganges, filling all of space. He will also see pavilions and palaces that are resplendent and beautiful. He will see the house below and the celestial palaces above, with all without obstruction. This state is called the gradual transformation of concentrated thoughts of fondness and low thing. It does not indicate sagehood if he does not think he has become a sage then this will be a good state. But if he considers himself a sage, then he will be vulnerable to the demon's influence. Commentary Further, when his mind accomplishes such purity that his skill in purifying the mind has reached its ultimate, applying his mind to cultivation of the way and to the practice of samadhi, he achieves a state of extreme purity at that point, he will suddenly see the earth, the mountains, and the rivers in the ten directions turn into Buddha lands, replete with the seven precious things. There are light shining everywhere. Every place will be adorned with the seven precious things. Gold, silver, lapis lazuli, mother of pearl, red pearls, carnelian, and coral. These precious things will illumine the ten directions. He will also see Buddhas, Tathagatas, as many as the sands of the Ganges River. Filling all of space, he will also see tower pavilions and jeweled palaces that are resplendent and beautiful. He will see the house below. Looking downwards, he will see all the house, and looking upwards, he will see what is happening in the celestial palaces above all without the least bit of obstruction. He is able to see any place he wishes to see. This state is called the gradual transformation of concentrated thoughts of fondness and low thing. Why is he able to see these things? It's because he ordinarily has likes and dislikes. He would like to go to the heavens and the Buddha lands and he would detest go into the house. He concentrates on such thoughts, being as attentive as a hen sitting on her eggs, as a cat waiting for a mouse, or as a dragon nurturing its pole. 
He does not think about anything else, but only about how fine it is in the Buddha lands and how much suffering there is in their house. His mind favors happy places and loathes the places of suffering and misery. Even truly, his concentrated thoughts create these kinds of states. It does not indicate sage root. He should not think that he has attained sage root and achieved a great spiritual skill. If he does not think he has become a sage, then this will be a good state. It's not a bad one. But if he considers himself a sage and says, What a terrific state I'm living with the Buddhas. In fact, I am a Buddha myself. Then he will be vulnerable to the demon's influence. If he thinks like that, the demons and the externalists will all go to keep him company. You say you're living with the Buddhas? Well, we'll be your friends and join you, they say. Sutra Further, as a person uses his mind to investigate what is profound and far away, he will suddenly be able to see distant places in the middle of the night. He will see city markets and community wells, streets and alleys, and relatives and friends, and he may hear their conversations. This state is called having been suppressed to the utmost. The mind flies out and sees much that had been blocked from view. It does not indicate sagehood. If he does not think he has become a sage, then this will be a good state. But if he considers himself a sage, then he will be vulnerable to the demon's influence. Commentary Further, as as the person uses his mind to investigate what is profound and far away, he will suddenly be able to see various situations in distant places in the middle of the night. He will see city markets where things are sold on the street and community wells where people draw water, large streets and small alleys. He may see his relatives and friends, his associates, and he may hear their conversations. He will be able to listen to them talking. This state is called having been suppressed to the utmost. The mind flies out and sees much that had been blocked from view. In his cultivation, he restrained the mind from indulging in idle thinking. Having stifled the mind to the extreme, he experiences the a sensation of flying out and seeing things no matter how far away they are. Usually, he tries not to look at things, but now all of a sudden his mind breaks loose and he can see everything. It does not indicate sagehood. He should not think that this is a good state. If he does not think he has become a sage, then this will be a good, possible state. But if he considers himself a sage, then he will be vulnerable to the demon's influence. If he claims to have realized sagehood, when he hasn't, or if he claims to have attained what he hasn't, he will find himself surrounded by demons.